Welcome to the Potter training video on the installation of Potter's P-Link expansion bus. P-Link is the 4-wire circuit that provides 1 amp of power in RS-45 communications for accessory carts. It has a maximum circuit length of 6,500 feet. P-Link has 2 wires for DC power and 2 wires that are used for communication. Wiring the cards is as simple as matching the power and communication lines throughout the entire circuit. For Class B wiring, limited T-tapping of the P-Link circuit is allowed. There is a notable difference in display between the 4-line RA6500R and the 2-line RA6075R enunciators. Both enunciators can be used with all addressable control panels, regardless of the size of the display on the control panel it is attached to. Potter remote enunciators come with a lockable hinge door and have several back box mounting options. The P-Link circuit will connect to the enunciator's positive, negative, A and B terminals, and it needs to have a P-Link address assigned before connecting power. The LED-16 is also an enunciator with 16 potential zones, each with an LED for alarm, trouble, and supervisory. The smaller format panels can only accommodate 10 of these. Due to the power requirements of the LEDs on this enunciator, it can either be powered from the 1 amp P-Link circuit or an AUX 24 volt DC power source. The DRV-50 supports 50 mappable LED outputs, with an additional 6 for system functions including power, earth fault, silence, alarm, supervisory, and trouble. There are 4 dry contact monitoring inputs that can only be wired class B. The LED outputs are 5 volt DC at 20 milliamps with a negative or cathode leg switching on when activated and a shared positive. The RLY5 provides 5 mappable Form C relays with a contact rating of 3 amps at both 24 volts DC and 125 volts AC. The IDC6 allows the addition of 6 2 wire conventional smoke detector circuits. Like the LED16, the DRV50 RLY5 and IDC6 require additional power and include terminals for both power and P-Link. The cards can be powered by the 1 amp P-Link circuit or from an auxiliary 24 volt DC power source. The MC1000 card allows one control panel, designated as the host, to report signals to the central station for up to 62 client panels. Each card provides a connection for the host as well as two client panels. The host panel has no ability to perform control functions like reset, silence, or acknowledge on the client panels, but it can display general zone style information. The host panel connects to the P-Link terminals on the left side and the client panels connect to the P-Link terminals on the right. The host panel P-Link circuit must connect to every MC1000 card. A client panel's P-Link will connect to either the client 1 or client 2 terminals only. This illustration shows the concept of a single host panel reporting for several client panels. To report all points of the central station, see a format is required. Contact ID only supports reporting by zone or by panel. The FCB1000 allows the relocation of the IP reporting Ethernet port closer to the customer's internet gateway. Available in a rack mount option as well as the stacker bracket, this card will be used for reporting only and does not turn off the PCOM port on the control panel. The control panel's port will still be used for programming any email or other internet-based services. The FIB1000 allows P-Link data to be transmitted via multi-mode fiber using ST connectors. These cards work in pairs and must be powered at their locations. The SPG1000 gives the ability to connect either a serial or parallel printer when required. The Pad100 SLCE is the 127 point SLC expansion card that can be installed on the large format panels. The SLC expansion card has return terminals if Class A circuitry is required. The installation of these cards is simply matching the positive, negative, A and B terminals along with setting the P-Link address. The PSN1000 is Potter's intelligent power supply that provides 6 notification appliance circuits and 10 amps of power. The main P-Link on the PSN1000 power supply is on the far right side of the board. The P-Link coming in from the panel or previous device is connected to these terminals. The isolated P-Link repeater terminals act as a booster providing an additional 1 amp of power and an additional 6500 feet of wire length. The PSN1000 includes return terminals to support Class A wiring of the repeated P-Link circuit. 
P-Link devices connected to the repeated terminals should be included in the battery calculation for the PSN1000 power supply. There can be a lot of versatility when using the P-Link repeaters on the PSN1000. We can run the P-Link from the control panel 6500 feet to the first power supply. Using the repeated terminals on power supply number 1, we can run up to 6500 feet to power supply number 2. In addition to the notification appliance circuits expected in a fire power supply, P-Link modules, including SLC expansion cards, can be remotely located in the PSN1000E enclosure. The CA6500 is a Class A card used with large format addressable control panels. The two P-Link circuits, six NAC circuits, and built-in SLC on this card are independently configured in the programming software for Class A or B. The I.O. circuits on the control panel are Class B only. The CA6500 slides under the main control panel PCB as shown here and is fastened to the chassis using two screws. There is a ribbon cable that plugs into the right side of both the CA6500 and the main control panel PCB. The CA6075 is the Class A card for the small format control panels. It includes the return terminals for the P-Link circuit, two NAC circuits, and built-in SLC, all of which are independently configured in the programming software. It mounts on the right-hand side of the control panel PCB. On the right side of the control panel, there is an 18-pin jack. This is where the card is going to plug in. But first, the CA6075 PC board needs to be removed from the chassis to prevent damage. First mount the chassis to the control panel using the two screws, then install the board back on the chassis using the guide pins for alignment. A CA6075 or 6500 Class A card is required to wire the P-Link in a Class A configuration like shown here. In Class A wiring, no T-tamping or branch circuits are allowed. The UD2000 DACT is an optional accessory card added for Central Station reporting via phone lines. This card requires no addressing since only one can be installed on a control panel. The UD2000 as well as the panel's built-in IP communicator support contact ID and SIA formats. The UD2000 will slide in behind the built-in enunciator on the control panel and there are guides to hold it in place. The card is secured with a screw and there is a 4-pin cable used to plug the DACT card into the control panel. On smaller control panels, there is a maximum of 64 P-Link devices, and on larger panels, there is a maximum of 128. Most device types allow a maximum of 31 on the system, with the few exceptions shown here. Potter control panels can differentiate between P-Link device types. A power supply, an SLC expansion card, and an enunciator can all be addressed 1. P-Link addressing is binary, meaning that switch 1 equals 1, Switch 2 equals 2, 3 equals 4, 4 equals 8, and 5 equals 16. To get address 21, turn on the 1, 3, and 5 dip switches. For any additional questions, please contact tech support at the phone number or email listed on the screen. And as always, don't forget to follow us on social media.